Hey, D Dijkstra here with uh, another calculus video for you. And today we are looking at approximating the area of a plane region. All right, so this is a part of calculus which can be very confusing for some. So we want to make sure that we get this lined up for you and hope you help you understand it. So uh, provide this video at this point for you in this now. What we're doing is we're basically looking at a curve. Okay, so we have some curve, some function, some f of x equals some function. And before, when we found areas, all we did was maybe it was a triangle or a square or a circle. We had certain values that were associated with that or equations. Well, now all of a sudden in calculus, we're starting to look at, well, what if I want to find an area under some curve that may not be so rigid and square or triangular. Uh, so this is an example of how back in the day Riemann sums started to come about and people started to think about, well, what if we drew uh, rectangles under each curve? Could we approximate a certain value of each rectangle and then thereby uh, come up with an estimated value of an area under a curve? And theoretically, it, if we see that as we get smaller and smaller and smaller rectangles, we can get a closer and closer and closer approximation. So that's what we're going to look at. But this is a basic example of one we might see uh, in our textbook or so forth. So what we have is the question says, use five. Use five rectangles to find an approximation of the area of the region under the curve and between the x values of x equals 0 and x equals 2. So, uh, and we're going to use, it says specifically use the right endpoint method. So, I'm going to show you what this looks like on this curve over here. We have right endpoints. So, what we do is we... Um, it said it went from 0 to 2. So basically what we have to do is we have to take the 2, and if we divide that by 5, then that means the, uh, the width of all of our rectangles will be 2 fifths. So we take from 0 to 2, and we can then take, well, the first rectangle will be at 2 fifths. And if I add, if I, uh, add 2 fifths more, it will be 4 fifths. Two fifths more will be six fifths. Two fifths more will be eight fifths. Two fifths more will be ten fifths, and that's where we stop at two. Hence, what we do is we draw from two fifths, we draw up to the curve, and then we cut over to the y-axis. I go to four fifths and draw up to the curve and over to the the, the column next to it or the uh, rectangle next to it. I go to six fifths. Etc. And we keep doing that along the way until we get to our ten fifths, and that's our region. So we basically draw up, draw up, draw up, draw up, and then once we hit that curve, we make a, a, a straight across or a horizontal line. And they may or may not match up with the y values, but that's okay. We can find out what those y values are. So hence, the width of each rectangle will be two fifths. Now, what is the height of the rectangle? Well, the height of the rectangle is determined by the function, f of x, right? When we put an x value in, we will get some y value, all right? Now, so then the area of each rectangle will be the width, or 2 fifths, times the height, or f of x. Now, what we could do is we could end up taking... 2 fifths times that, the y value at x, at x equal 2 fifths, and add that to 4 fifths times the width, add that to five, 6 fifths times 8 fifths times, and make a giant sum. But instead, we have a summation formula, which we've been working on. So we're going to show you that shortcut method. All right, so here's what that looks like. We have the sum from i is equal to 1, our index of summation, to 5, because we're doing 
uh, five iterations of each width. And our width again was two fifths. And our height again was f of x sub i. Now, f of x sub i just means that we're putting in an x value into our function there. And then we're going to use an i because each one has a, a new way to do it. So um, each x or each y will be a new iteration of the x's. So here's what it looks like a little bit more. The sum of phi, five i equals one. Now, if we have two fifths on the outside, now the inside is what we're, where we have the function. Now you may recognize negative two fifths i squared. That goes back to our function of our negative x squared, right? That's negative x squared plus five. So I'm going to use this, and I'm going to use that as my f of x, my function, right? Now, why is this i there? Well, that's because every time we take an x, we have an x times one, or an x times two, x times three, x times four, x times five, because there's five separate uh, rectangles. If you notice, this would be two-fifths i, four-fifths. So if I put one, that's just two-fifths. If i were two, that's four-fifths. If i were three, that's six-fifths. If i were uh, uh, four, and then i were five, that would be ten-fifths. Okay, so that's where that comes from. Now, so we have an i there. Okay, now, plus five. Well, how does that break down into our summation formula? Well, let's look at this. Uh, let me open that up a little bit. Now, we have the sum again of one to five of two fifths times, well, what we did here was we squared this. So four over 25, because two squared is four, five squared is 25, so we get four 25ths times i squared plus five. Now recall, here are your summation formulas. If we have the sum of some constant, we take the constant, we multiply it by the upper bound. If we have an i, then it's n times n plus one divided by two. If we have an i squared, that's n times n plus one times two n plus one divided by six. Those are your summation formulas, so we need those. Well, in this case, stop the video. What do you have? What's our i value? Okay, is it just a constant? Is it an i? Is it an i squared? Are there more than one of these involved? Okay, it'd be good for you to stop the video, see if now you can substitute your i value in, substitute your uh, constant value, your summation of a constant, and try the problem. All right, well, let's see if you got it right. Okay, let's check it out. Here we go. Now, we took two fifths and we put that on the outside because that's our final x value. We're going to multiply that by the summation of the y's because we're taking all the x's and all the y's and adding them all together. So now, the sum from 1 to 5, negative 4 25ths times i squared, just to review, plus the sum of from 1 to 5 of 5. Now, we can separate those because in our original function there was a plus 5. So we know we can take the sum of each piece. Now, by looking at an i squared, we simply substitute in the n value. So this is going to be 2 fifths times uh, the quantity of negative 4 25ths times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6 because that is the same as i squared. Plus, 5 is a constant, so we use the constant rule. All we do is take 5 times n. All right, go to the next level. 4 25ths, negative 4 25ths. Now we plug in the 5. n is 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11, divided by 6, plus 5 times 5. Now, come down again. 2 fifths times negative 4 25ths. 
times, well, the sixes will drop out. So that means five times 11 is 55 divided, oops, not divided by six because the six has dropped out. So that's good. And now we have plus 25 from five times five. And so our final value, if you take what's inside the brackets first and then multiply that by two fifths, you will get an answer of 6.48. All right, so that has been a quick 10 minute video on the approximation of the area of a plane region, right handed or right endpoint method, okay? Hope you've had a great time. Thanks again, appreciate it, and uh, love math. Peace.